Summary of Mountains Beyond Mountains by Tracy Kidder. Tracy Kidder, an investigative journalist, goes to Haiti in 1994 in order to write a story about the country's military takeover. There, Kidder witnesses Paul Farmer, an extremely well-respected doctor and humanitarian worker, bargain with members of the American troops on behalf of his Haitian patients. Shortly after that, Kidder and Farmer fly back to the U.S. together, and Kidder is struck by how cool and selfless Farmer is. Five years later, Kidder meets Farmer again at Harvard Medical School. Farmer is a well-known doctor there, and Kidder knows him there. Several of Farmer's patients call him a saint because of how well he cares for and treats them. Kidder goes back to Haiti in 2000 to see what Farmer is doing there. He was impressed by Farmer. Farmer has set up a medical center called Zanmi Los Anti with the help of the charity he started, Partners in Health. This center sees hundreds of thousands of people every year for almost nothing. Farmer is a talented doctor who spends a lot of time talking to each of his patients and studying how the Haitians use voodoo. Farmer, who studied anthropology in college, changed the way Americans thought about voodoo. Before Farmer, people thought that Haitians couldn't take medicines or vaccines because they believed in voodoo. Farmer, on the other hand, showed that a lot of Haitians believe in both voodoo and Western treatment. Farmer also has strong ideas about American foreign policy. He says that for hundreds of years, America has supported military dictatorships in Haiti, which has kept the country poor. Kidder then goes back in time to talk about Farmer's childhood. Farmer was born into a poor family in Massachusetts. His father was a salesman, and when Farmer was young, the family moved to Florida. In Florida, Farmer met Haitian refugees for the first time while picking fruit, which was considered Negro work in the 1960s. Farmer was a great student who went to Duke University and then Harvard Medical School. His relationship with his father was strange. Even though his father loved him and was proud of what he had done, he never praised him. When Farmer was young, he went to Haiti to help out. There, he met Ophelia Dahl, a pretty young woman who became his best friend. During this time, Farmer believed in liberation theology, which says that people should work hard to fix the real-world problems that people face. Farmer built the Zanmi Los Ante Medical Center with the help of Boston donors and his Harvard friend Jim Young Kim. He also started a charity group called Partners in Health. When they were in their late 20s, Farmer asked Ophelia to marry him. Ophelia turned him down because she was afraid that his charity work would limit the time they could spend together. Still, Ophelia kept working closely with partners in health. Eventually, she became the budget director for the organization. In the early 1990s, Haiti had a military government, and Farmer was banned from the country for a short time because he was an American and a left-wing thought. At the start of this time, Farmer gets PIH going in Lima, Peru. When drug-resistant tuberculosis spreads, it makes Farmer want to find new ways to treat the deadly disease. Even though he and Jim Kim want to give their new TB medicines to people in South America, they find that they are too expensive. Farmer takes this to mean that South American lives aren't that important. Jim Kim is able to cut the cost of TB treatments by 95% by working with drug companies, and PIH sends drug-resistant TB medicines all over Peru. By the end of the 1990s, Farmer's life is very busy. He is a well-known doctor who has also won a MacArthur Genius Grant. He gives talks all over the world and works on several books and articles at the same time. He still does hands-on work in Peru and Haiti, spending hours each day with each patient. Almost all of them think of him as a hero. Kidder plans to spend a few months traveling with Farmer. Kidder is surprised to find out that Farmer is married to an anthropology student in Paris called Didi Bertrand. Farmer met Didi in Haiti, and the two of them now have a young daughter named Catherine. Farmer goes to Paris to see Didi, but he can't stay more than a day, which seems to bother Didi. After Paris, Farmer and Kidder fly to Russia where Farmer plans to look into the conditions in some of the dirtiest and most dangerous jails in the world. Farmer has teamed up with the Soros Foundation, 
which is run by the rich philanthropist George Soros, to do this job. Farmer argues in front of the World Bank and the Soros Foundation that Russian jails need TB treatments right away. Shortly after that, the World Bank agrees to give millions of dollars to Russia to help treat TB. In 2000, the Gates Foundation, one of the biggest charities in the world, gave PIH $45 million to help get rid of TB in South America. Even though this is a big win, Farmer still works on the ground in Haiti and gives talks and attends meetings all over the world. Kidder sees a disaster in Haiti while Farmer is in Europe. A young boy named John is in serious condition because he has a rare form of cancer on his face. Serena Koenig, who works for Farmer, decides to send John to Boston for emergency care, even though the trip alone will cost $20,000 by itself. John is in a lot of pain as he drives from Zanmi Los Ante to the airport. By the time he gets to Boston, he can hardly breathe. John gets the best care at a hospital in Boston, but he still dies. Farmer is very sad about John's death, and Kidder wonders if John's death might not be a sign that Farmer's work is ultimately pointless, no matter how hard he tries, people still live in terrible conditions and die in pain, no matter how hard he tries to help them. Farmer believes, though, that it is worth it to try to save individual lives, no matter how much it might cost to help them. He says that the standard points about cost-effectiveness are just ways for rich and powerful people to explain why they don't do anything. Farmer still works as a doctor in Haiti and other countries in the third world. He works long hours and sometimes walks miles just to make house calls. Kidder comes to the conclusion that Farmer is not a saint, but he does care deeply about helping those who are in need. About the author John Tracy Kidder was born in New York City in the 1940s. He went to Phillips Academy for high school prep and then to Harvard University for college. Kidder planned to study political science at Harvard, which was okay with his folks. As a sophomore, though, he moved to studying English instead. After he graduated in 1967, he joined the army and worked as a lieutenant for two years. During that time, he was sent to Vietnam on active duty. After that, he got into the Iowa Writers Workshop, which is often thought to be the best MFA school in the country. Kidder chose to focus his creative energy on writing nonfiction and news while he was living in Iowa. The Juan Corona killings were the focus of his first book, The Road to Yuba City, which came out in 1975. His second book, The Soul of the New Machine, which came out in 1981 and was about the early days of the computer business, was a big hit and won the Pulitzer Prize for general nonfiction. Since the 1980s, Kidder has continued to write a lot and has won many awards for it. He has taught writing and journalism at Harvard and has written for hundreds of magazines. He lives in Massachusetts. Hope we summarized it fully and you liked it. Please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel so that we are motivated to create more videos.